joined by Nashville SC head coach BJ Callahan. Uh, coach, uh, first match since League's Cup August 6th, first time lost match since back in July on the 20th. Um, how training and preparation has gone the last few weeks and what do you expect to see from Austin? Yeah, training's been great. Obviously, the, the, our first objective was to play as many games in the League's Cup as we could. Uh, the moment that that was not our reality, uh, we, we refocused on how we were going to maximize the, the, the two-week sort of uh, non-game <laughs> schedule. Um, and it's been, it's been a real uh, re-energizing moment for, for the group. Uh, we've had the opportunity to work on a lot, continue to build our culture uh, both on and off the field. And uh, so, you know, and we're really, really excited to get back uh, and play in front of the home fans of uh, Nashville at Geotis um, and, and expect, you know, with our energy and their energy uh, to come out and, and have a really good performance. Um, what we expect from Austin is a team that's well coached, uh, well organized. Um, you know, when you watch them play, you can you realize there's no detail uh, that's left uh, in their game plans. Um, a dynamic attacking team, for sure, that have both individual talent and a uh, collective uh, talent. Um, and, are, and to be quite honest, they're in a position very similar to us. Um, so we're expecting to get uh, an energized group that's going to make a hard playoff push. Uh, and, and that's our objective as well. Thanks, Coach. We'll go ahead with questions in the room. Uh, and then on Zoom, if you have a Zoom question, please raise your hand. Ben? Yeah, BJ, um, you just kind of mentioned the, the time off, and I know you've been working to kind of implement some things that you'd like to see in the team. Um, maybe what are some specific things that, you, um, that you've that you maybe worked on this week that you're hoping to, to see the guys take a step forward with tomorrow, uh, Saturday? Yeah, I think I think what we really spent for the for the large period of time was focusing on ourselves. It was a it was an opportunity that we didn't have to prepare for an opponent, <clears throat> and we could really think about the way we want to play and, and getting that cohesiveness. I would say we focused on all phases of play. Um, you know, again, trying to create a, a connection with our build up and linking it to an opportunities to score goals, and then really getting defined on how we want to how we want to defend and how we want to press. So, I mean, in general. Uh, we went into detail in a lot of the phases, but it, it's about with the ball, how can we create better goal scoring chances? And without the ball, how can we be a really difficult team to, to play against? And I think you know, we were able to spend that time uh, focusing on that and really working together so that we're, uh, we're as gelled as we can when we go play on Saturday. Go ahead. Yeah, and then kind of just heading into this nine game kind of stretch run, um, obviously winning games is important making the playoffs as a goal. Do you have kind of some specific targets that you're looking to hit in these next nine games uh, that, that you can share? So f for us, it's a uh we looking, we're looking at this phase as uh, like the group stage. We know that we have nine guaranteed games left, um, and, and we're going to have to earn ourselves into the knockout. The way that we're going to earn it is about having consistent performances. So we want to lay out game plans. We want to. We, it's very clear on how we want to play now as a as a group. And for us, it's about you know making incremental strides each time when we play over these nine games and, and, and trusting that if we're able to execute the way we want to, the results will end up coming for us. But you know, in for us, it's about being true to ourselves. That's, that's how we're going to measure ourselves. That we, when, when the pressure gets to the, to the most, which is always on game day, <coughs> is it still the way that it looks and is it still the way that we, we want to execute um, you, you know, th th that we talked about you know, during the week? All right. Uh, BJ, obviously you as a coach have particular goals, not only for the nine games like you just stated, but also for, a, for the game itself. Um, but for the untrained night, the fan that is looking to see uh, what's changed uh, in, the, in, in, in Nashville and see after all these weeks that now you've been training with the team, what can they expect, what can they see? Yeah, we, we wanted them to see a team that plays together. Um, that first off brings a brings a competitiveness and an attitude, um, and a, and a and a workmanlike mentality that fits sort of the culture of this city and, and that something that the fans can be can be proud of uh, when they show up on Saturday. They can see a team that's going to fight uh, all the way to the end. You know, with understanding this is our first step towards you know our goal, which is to make is to make the playoffs. Um, in you know a little bit more specifically in the in on the field of play. 
we want to be able to create goal scoring chances. We, we want, you know, and the best way you can see is we want the ball inside the penalty box. <laughs> you know, we want to see a team that's, you know, defending aggressively, creating transition moments to get the ball in the penalty box. We want to see our opportunities that we're moving the ball quickly. We're able to, you know, disorganize the opponent to get into the penalty box and create that. So for us, that's what we want. We know that brings the most excitement to the, to the fan, um, but at the same time, it brings the most energy to the team. Um, and, and that's, that's, First and foremost, so I think what you know, what we hope that when they come to Saturday and they look at this team, they're going to be a see, they're going to see a team that's uh, attacking, uh, attacking and attacking the penalty box and trying to create and trying to score goals. So would you say then that in the, the fan can obviously not expect per se a, a change on the personnel that is going to be starting the game, but the strategy and the way they play, correct? Yeah, that's a that's a I would say that's a fair way to say it. you know this is. This is the group that we have. This is the group that we're committed to. This is the group that's been working really hard um, to to sort of embrace all of these new ideas. Um, so if there's going to be a lot of familiar faces that the fans are <laughs> used to seeing, but we just hope to see that it's in a, maybe a little bit of a different way, um, and in a way that can that can get them energized, and can, their energy then can give it to us on the field, um, and, a, and a team that's going to be uh, aggressive both with and without the ball. <coughs> I just, this is the one I want to ask about Patrick Yazbek and Jonathan Perez. They both joined the team around the same time you did. And I just want to see how they've acclimated with the team and, and what, what are your thoughts on them and, and how they're going to proceed at FLC. Yeah, uh, so Patrick Yazbek, um, Again, his transition is different. He's obviously, you know, uh, an Australian coming from Norway, integrating into an American culture, um, thrown right into the, you know, kind of thrown right in. So the, I think these last two weeks have been an opportunity for him to get really, really settled, I would say, on and off the field. Um, and having players settle off the field and, and taking that stress away from them only helps them perform at their, uh, at their maximum on the field. And so for me, I think that's been a great opportunity for Patrick to get settled uh, on the field. He's been he, he's been great. I mean, he, his 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 daily, uh, I would say, commitment to training, um, the effort that he puts in, the effort you see on the field from him is the same effort he puts in on the training field. Um, he's found his voice and he's vocal uh, with the team. Um, and I would say he's a great compliment to the great the, the leadership that we already have here. Uh, Johnny's a, Johnny's a, a different, right? He's from LA Galaxy. He's here on loan. Um, he's a young player. Uh, we have seen his quality uh, shine. Um, you saw the opportunity that he had with Huntsville. You know, was able to make an immediate impact in the first game down there. I think that's a testament to our club and, and sort of the alignment that we're trying to to create. Um, and I, I expect both of them to to play big roles this weekend. Um, And Johnny settled in. Johnny settled in really, I would say, really well. And the the quality that he has uh, has made him sort of uh, instantly respected, you know, inside the, inside the group, even as a young player. Um, and he's a he's a humble a humble kid who who wants to wants to learn, wants to improve, wants to develop uh, uh, with big with big goals. And we're excited to, to help him, uh, you know, reach reach the ambitions that he set out. Well, there, Adam, if you have a second. Yeah, um, last time Austin came to Geodes Park, there was a kind of a big storyline about the two MVP candidates, Yurusi and Mukhtar, and it was kind of a back and forth. And then, uh, you know, there was, there was a lot of sort of excitement. Uh, now we look at both teams in different areas, obviously. But it, I guess, does that, their last visit, or anything from previous times, Does that come up in your preparation for this game at all when you're talking to the guys, or is it just pretty much let's look at what's coming up ahead of us? Yeah, I would say we're we're really focused on the way that we're going to have a performance uh, on Saturday on ourselves. We obviously have to take into account who the opponent is, the challenges that they're going to uh, present to us, and and how we're going to to plan for that. But our planning is very much based upon our collective group here. Um, we know we know what we need to do uh, to achieve sort of the the larger goal. And so when we're going through our preparations on the week, it's about it's about us. It's not about individual players on our team or individual players um, 
from the opponent, even though we respect the, <laughs> as I opened the, <laughs> opened the press conference, we, we, we respect the, the, the quality that they have across the board, um, not only as individuals, uh, not only collectively, but from, from their whole organization of how well coached they are and how well prepared they come into every match. Yeah, I just wanted to get a quick update um, on maybe some of the fitness of the guys. I'm trying to think back to the last game, but I think um, Randall obviously has missed time. Lucas has been coming back. Drew uh, was hurt, I think, in, in your first match. Do you have updates on those guys? And yeah, so I can tell you that Randall is still unavailable for selection. Drew still unavailable for selection. Lucas is currently in full training. Uh, so. It's a, just a, it's a little bit more of like a daily watching how he is. So it's, I wouldn't, he's available for selection. Um, he's in full training, but it's going to be a, a, a little bit on terms of how, how he responds to kind of the increasing of the loads throughout the early part of this week and as we still go into today and tomorrow. Games left. How has training been going and what's the mindset from the team heading into the stretch run here? It's been great. I mean, it feels like we haven't played in, uh, in quite a long time. Uh, I think everyone's really excited. We had a, a great, you know, couple weeks just to focus on us, focus on training. Um, it's been really positive. A lot of energy, a lot of competition uh, within the group, which is what you want to see. Uh, that's that's the new standard. It has to be competitive every single training session, and I think that's been a, a, a welcome change for us. And so, guys are excited. We're ready to get back in front of our fans at Geodis, and uh, we know we have an important nine-game stretch here. And so that's what our focus is, and that starts with Austin on Saturday. Thanks so much. Ben? Yeah, obviously you were with uh, with the, at the Olympics for a lot of kind of the initial period while BJ was getting um, into the team and kind of setting things up. Kind of what was that like? Um, obviously being invested in what's going on here, but also kind of having to watch from the outside in. Yeah, super difficult um, to manage, to be honest. I mean, you always want to be so focused and present on where you are. At the same time, you still care a lot about your teammates and what's going on back at home. Um, the difficult thing also with the time change was the games. It'd be, you know, one thirty kickoffs and I, I remember I'd always like wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, like check the score and, and like then I'd be like, Oh well I gotta watch the highlights now and then I'm like, yeah. it's like three o'clock and I'm just like um, but yeah, it was tough. So I couldn't really watch watch the games, um, just had to catch up and you know, got to talk with guys about how it was going and uh, even though the results might have not have gone our way, especially, you know, looking at League's Cup performances, I think guys were just starting to sense like how things could be different and how we want to play and, and what you know BJ is going to bring in terms of style of play and and the principles and and all those things that it's just been a good learning experience I think for for a lot of guys myself included being back just of of learning what we're going to look like what is our identity going to be and um, I think that that is exciting when you have players who are like learning new things and and challenging themselves in ways that maybe they haven't um haven't ever before. Okay. Yeah, and then kind of just looking at the table, it's a little bit of a different position than you guys are maybe normally used to. Um, obviously still within reach of, of making the playoffs again. Kind of, um, maybe as captain, what's kind of the mindset that you're trying to preach to the locker room just in the next nine games? Yeah, I think there's obviously so much to, to play for still, and we know how fast things can change in this league. All of a sudden we win back-to-back -back games and we're above the line. And that's, you know, it's got to be taking it one game at a time. I don't think we can look at this as a whole block and just be like, oh, well, if we do this in this game and get a result here on the road or here at home, it's like, no, we, we got to go out every single game knowing that it is going to be more intense. There is going to be more pressure because we have, you know, we expect ourselves to be in the playoffs every year. That's, that's never going to change. Um, now you're right. We find ourselves behind um, where we want to be at this point in the season. But, but we still have nine games left, and, and there is time to make moves, and our expectation is to you know, fully be in the playoffs. And so that's, I think the message is it's one game at a time, and we'll keep attacking every game as if it's you know, a knockout-type game where we're going in with, with needing points. Because um, that's the reality is when you're chasing, you got to make up those points somehow. So the good news for us is you know, five of those nine games we're playing at teams that are at or below us in the standings. And so there's a lot, there's gonna be a lot of movement. Um, we see how fast it can change in this league. So um, hopefully we're the team that's, that's making the jump. Walker, you already said that it's been challenging uh, the work with the BJ. Uh, how, how much can you compare to being challenging, challenged by and difficulty for you guys to actually acquire his idea, especially when, when it comes to the team going forward? Yeah, I think guys have responded really well. I think 
he's thrown a lot at the group in terms of information and you talk about style of play and tactics and identity. I mean, there are a lot of things that people are learning about how he wants to play. And that is in the form of like almost classroom like settings where you're in watching video and, and he's asking you like, what is the principle that we should be seeing next? And like, where should this ball be going next? Where should the runs be going? And guys are like focused as if it was a, a classroom and they're trying to answer these questions. And then obviously implementing that on the field in actual training sessions and in, you know, some like scrimmage work and uh, full 11 v 11s on the field. You know, it's been a, a tough few weeks for guys without the games because we have been training very hard, knowing that we have to get our, you know, physical side of things, um, staying like maintaining that fitness like during these two to three weeks. So it's been it's been challenging from the physical point of view, from the mental point of view. But ultimately, it's still refreshing. Like it's still like we feel like we're moving towards something, and I think that's what's giving guys the energy to kind of continue to grow and develop. So it's all been positive. I think now we're really excited to have had you know over a month now to acclimate a little bit, and now we're just you know looking to have consistent performances that reflect the things that we've been working on. So in terms of, I mean, you've been under different coaches training and and, and play even on the national team. And you already know the coach from the national team anyways. In terms of what nice people look like once in the pitch, is it going to be a lot different, way different? How do you think? Yeah, I think it should be a lot, uh, a lot different with the things that we've been working on. Um, I think there's a lot more um, clarity that's being brought to light in, in terms of how we're going to attack, how we're going to score goals. And I think fans and spectators should start to recognize some different patterns of play, some movements that can now be branded with like, oh, this is what Nashville SC is trying to do on the field. And so I, the hope is that that becomes more and more evident with, you know, more games that are being played. That you see, oh, when the ball goes here, like, I bet this guy's going to make that run and these guys are going to fall up here and the ball's going to be played across and they're going to have a chance. You know, that's, that's more of what we're looking for um, is these consistent movements and patterns that can, can hopefully break down the opponent and, um, that's the stuff that we've been working on on the training pitch. We'll go to Valera on Zoom. Hey, Walker. Um, going off of what the earlier question, for you as a center back, is it is this change in identity, it, does, does that change a lot of what you have to do on the pitch, or is it similar for you being a center back and not maybe as involved going forward? I mean, I think it's always – it's always different whatever system you're playing in, whatever formation you're playing in, style of play, like that does change what you're doing uh, on the field. So I'll give you an example from like a center back's point of view with how we want to defend and, and get fullbacks pushed up on maybe their winger. Center back's going to have to be a lot more responsible for defending balls into the channel if, if an attacking mid runs through or a forward makes a diagonal run. Um, so we have to defend that channel a little bit better. And we want to compress the field a little bit more than in the past. And so that's going to be a lot more sliding from side to side from our back line. So you're going to see us making the field more narrow and being more compact, which is, means we have to move a little bit more. So that would be like a subtle change. Um, obviously, offensively, we're looking to um, probably have people appear in some different pockets, which could open up some, some more passing lanes for me as a center back. So those are like small examples of why a, a formation can affect like my role. Um, other than that, I mean, you're still, you're still, it's 11 v 11. You're still trying to defend the penalty box well, win your duels, win your challenges, and, and set the tone from an intensity point of view. So those are all things that um, I'll continue to try and do. Um, but yeah. Go ahead, Valerie, if you have not. Yeah, and um, earlier this week, um, Dax McCarty announced his retirement. Um, have you spoken to him? I know you spent four years, obviously, in Nashville uh, playing with him. He passed on the captaincy to you. So any messages or uh, yeah, for Yeah, we, we texted a little bit following that video, and I said, uh, you know, I always joked around about him being a number 10 and how um, he's, he's a great, you know, has a great final pass and, and needs to shoot more and uh, all those things. And so I, I sent him a text along the lines of like, I hope that this means you're just retiring from the number six position and you're just moving to number 10. Um, I didn't get that clarification from your video. So he responded and, you know, we had some good laughs. And um, I, I mean, what an incredible career. You know, it's, it's, it's sad because he, that's a guy that I grew up watching in the league, have so much success. And you see what he's brought to teams on and off the field. And that it's like a sober 
thought to realize, oh my gosh, like he's retiring, like everyone else is getting older. Like that's, that's pretty sad to, to see an MLS with no Dax McCarty in it, you know? Um, so I wish him all the best. And I, I told him he's due for one more banger of a goal, but the stipulation was it couldn't be against us. Uh, so he, he agreed to terms and uh, <laughs> hopefully he'll produce on his end of the deal. Yeah, Walker, I know you've kind of been working through some of your, your coaching badges. Um, I'm curious, do you feel like that, um, maybe kind of a, a different way of looking at it, has helped you at all kind of um, adjusting to BJ and um, kind of understanding what he's asking from you? Do you feel like that different perspective has impacted you? Yeah, I, I know a couple of guys here have been, you know, trying to get their licenses. So I did my B license course probably, I think, two years ago, maybe three years ago now. Um, and you're always looking at it through a slightly different different lens when you're from a, a coach's point of view. But I think it is helpful when you start to, to think about the game like that and you start to think about uh, ways that you can break down an opponent based on, on shape, personnel, uh, different things that you can tweak. And so I think probably the ability to make like in-game adjustments or communicate with your own coaching staff, hey, this is what I'm feeling on the field. Are you guys seeing that from above, from the iPad? Like, I think we're getting broken down here. Should we do this? Like, it just opens up the, the conversation probably a little bit more if you can understand what's going on on the field um, or, or implementing their instructions, you know, if they just bring something to you. So I think it's important um, to at least, you know, immerse yourself in that way to understand who you're playing and, and what you as a team are trying to do. And um, yeah, those are all things that are, are going to be helpful.